Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm five-time Emmy Award viewer Mark Frechette. And I'm Scott Guerin, the research and development chef here at Modernist Pantry. And today's episode is a really, really cool one. On WTF, we're here to transform food. Today, we're here to transform food and maybe a little bit your plate and your presentation. This is going to be a big, big episode uh, talking about fluid gels. Yeah, so fluid gel is... Uh... It's kind of difficult to explain because a fluid and a gel, it sounds very simple, but it actually takes a little bit of work and a little bit of know-how to get to use. And yeah. what we're using today is agar. And agar is a common ingredient uh, that is used in vegan or vegetarian gelatin. Yeah. Uh, but that's a lot of the times before people realize that we have an actual ingredient oh, for it, vegan yeah, or vegetarian gelatin. Yeah, used in gelatin. vegan gelatin. It's not in the Druid's Grove vegan yes. gelatin. That uses carrageen, which has lower melting point and gives you a better mouthfeel. But that's not the point. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of recipes that are vegan and vegetarian will call for agar. Um, tell us, so agar is um, kind of like carrageenan, which I kind of slipped on yes. there. It's also uh, a seaweed extract. Yes, so um, it's made from seaweed. Uh, and what I meant was vegan jello or vegan Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> So uh, it's a seaweed ex extract that uh, when you add it to water and you heat it to a temperature, it will create a gel when it cools. So very similar to gelatin, a traditional gelatin, in the sense that when you heat it and then you let it cool, it will turn into a gel, but it doesn't necessarily work in the same exact way. Uh, much like when we talked about vegan gelatin in our past episode of WTF, you're going to want to mix it, dry mix it with a, a sugar or any dry ingredients that you have. Mix it into your liquid and then you're going to have to heat it up to at least boiling. It needs to come to that 212 to fully hydrate yeah. before you cool it down and it'll make a gel. So let's back it up. So, so a gel, if you're looking at it, you're think, thinking jello, that's actually pretty right. Jello is a gel. Yeah. Um, and gummies, I guess, right? So there's yeah. different textures. So a fluid gel sounds like it would just be a pretty runny gel. Yeah, so you may think that, oh, you just have to add a, a very small amount to make it just slightly a gel. And that's not true. You actually have to make quite the dense gel. Uh, and then you take that gel and you, let, you cut it into cubes and then you need to put it into a blender. And what you're doing there, uh, agar doesn't melt at, at room temperature. Sure. It, it actually melts at about 185 degrees Fahrenheit, 85 Celsius. Yeah. So you're gonna have to blend it up. And when you're blending it up, it's creating very, very fine shards of that gel that resemble a fluid. Yeah. But it is actually not. It's just a, a very you know condensed network of these little gel shards. Then uh, when you plate them, they actually have slightly different properties. They will be solid until you apply pressure, and then they will be liquid. So yeah. it, it's very fun to uh, to learn how to plate. We'll do a little bit with I'll plating. Say, this in might a be one of those things that's easier to easier to see than to kind of explain it. Mm -hmm. So so a fluid gel doesn't necessarily have to be agar. Agar is the common go-to for a few reasons we'll get into. But let's let's do a quick uh, so a quick we'll, show. we'll do a quick demo of uh, just what to do. And, and I have a. Uh, a Bloody Mary fluid gel here. So it's not running back down as you can see. Uh, I'm just going to put it into a small piece of celery that I've just cut and it holds onto its shape. It ran off the back there because I put a bit too much, but that's totally fine. That's Bloody Mary. That's, There's yeah. no such thing <laughs> yeah, as too much. Exactly. So this is a very simple little hors d'oeuvre you can do. So I could just take a piece of bacon here and then if I need to, just a little bit of, uh, if you have Tabasco powder, that works really well. If you want to garnish this with an olive or you want to garnish this with a little bit of horseradish, you can yeah. do that. I just like a little bit of Tabasco powder and I just sprinkle a little bit on top there. And then... If you're binge watching and you happen to make some chili oil and sorbet preparation, that would yes. be great here. So you put it right here and when we have hors d'oeuvres for your next party. Yeah. But as you can see, you know, we have this bit of... Uh, fluid gel right on my plate and I can take it and I can spread it nice and evenly yeah. and it's it you can make a nice like little uh, canvas to plate on top of which has a lot of flavor. Yeah so when you're looking at uh, when you're flying through your Instagram you're looking at beautiful plates you're lucky enough to sit before a beautiful plate you'll often see the the streaks the dots the swooshes uh, a lot of those things I probably safe to say most of those are going to be a fluid gel that's been yes. in some way manipulated uh, in with a spoon or a fancy yeah, some of them are, are sauces some of them are fluid gels uh generally the dots are, are fluid gels because the best thing about them is that they will hold their their sphere kind of shape yeah until you run something through them uh, and so you can actually do something that's pretty amazing is you can 
stack the dots. So you can put a dot right on top of another Ooh. dot and it looks really uh, visually appealing because you think it's like a little gummy candy until you realize it's a sauce, but yeah. it really has no properties like anything else. So the reason, well, let me ask you, why, because it's certainly like gelatin's jelly-ish too. Why why agar over some of the other gelling agents that, that are out there? So agar, agar is very simple to use. It, it can go for a wide range of acids. It tolerates alcohol. It tolerates salt and sugar content. So I like to kind of say agar is one of those... Um, gateway drugs in, into doing yeah. modernist cooking is that you can use it and, and there's almost no leeway for, for error. You you have a recipe, you make yeah. it, it works. Sometimes, you know, when you get into spherification, uh, there's a lot of little intricacies that, that make it difficult, but once you get it, it's, it's an amazing process. Agar is like, okay, I can make this and it works every single time without having to do too much extra to it. Yeah, so for the demo here, we have uh, the Bloody Mary uh, gel. The recipe for this is actually available online at blog.modernistpantry.com. So head over there, you'll find the full recipe for it. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, but I, one of the things I like about the recipe is, is, is it kind of highlights that I want to say toughness. I don't mean it in the sense that it's a tough gel, but uh, the ability for because it's 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 highly acidic with that tomato in yep. there and everything else. And agar is not one of those things where you have to worry as much about things you know for about buffering or, or mm -hmm. anything like that as well. Yeah, it, it's sturdy, it's stable, which which is a, a good word to describe it. Um, so you can do a lot more with agar than just fluid gel. Uh, yeah. I guess we can maybe talk about that at the end, but want to see a few things, you know, just on how you know, fluid gel I think they came can for the plating. Of, yeah, they can kind of work. And we have like a little uh, like spread there. And I have just another fluid gel that's a little bit brighter so we can kind of see. Yeah, yeah. So if I wanted to make a nice, beautiful dot, I can do that. And we got to, you know, we can do a few of them on the plate. I'm going to make you reach out all the way over here with that well, plate so Cole that? can get it at the close-up. Yeah. How are we doing up there, Cole? Perfect. So we can do these beautiful dots. And then I can put another one right on top of this, and it kind of sits up even higher. Yeah, and yeah. if you were to put you know, um, a normal sauce, it would, it would deflate and kind of just yeah, yeah. flattened out. So then we can also do here, and I'll do it up in this corner. I can do a nice little dot, and then we take a spoon. Very simple. And if you're going to do a spoon push, this is like so common in restaurants for the past 10 years. Is yeah. This shows the, the proper viscosity of a sauce uh, if you're a chef. Yeah. Because if you make a spoon push and it doesn't run back together, it's called nappe in French, but that shows you the proper viscosity of a sauce. So I can take this and I take just the edge and I just give it a push. And boom, I have a beautiful, you know, spoon push that you can plate around. Yeah. And if it was dark, if you did like a beet fluid gel or something like that, oh. it would look gorgeous right on a plate because those big, bright, vibrant colors. Yeah. That's fantastic. And then there's the one that I won't ask you to do because in addition to being responsible for the show and the content, we're also responsible for the cleaning. But the splat. Yeah, so, so which, the splat would be very easy. I, I, won't, oh I won't do it, but so if I take this and I just... I'm, you, Greg, you can do it now. So, it's safe. So I just take the back of a spoon and... You just do that and it'll spread it out. Uh, obviously, if, if I had something, uh, not necessarily a little bit thinner, but if I had a little bit more liquid on there and I gave it a little bit more and didn't want to ruin my beautiful table right now, yeah. <laughs> I could do it. But yeah, you just tap it and it'll spread out. And then you can plate really, I like nice geometric shapes yeah, yeah. that are, are clean around something that's kind of chaotic, like a splatter. Yeah. So it just adds that you know controlled chaos. It's, Oh, kind of simulates a uh, kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so this is a great thing to get to play around with your plating. Um, if you're a culinary professional, you've probably put in your hours doing yes. this. Um, and if you're a culinary explorer doing this from home, um, prepare to spend probably a lot of time doing this and practicing it. You just made it all look really easy. The truth is, um, it, there's some knacks, some tricks to it. You'll notice he did the demo, not me. That's because when I tried to do the demo, this would have been too long. <laughs> until we got one. We don't have time for that many takes, people. So it takes some practice. So if you're going to do the practice, you're going to want to make the right gel with the right ingredient, but you're probably going to want to make the Bloody Mary version for practice because you'll go through a lot of it and just keep cleaning the plate as it were. Yes. Cool. Um, now, if you happen to have the agar kicking around, let's talk about some other, some other uh, agar tricks real quick. Yeah, so on top of fluid gel, um, with agar, it was initially used in place of gelatin and a lot of things. And the best part about it is that if you wanted to make a nice clear, clarified stock, you would traditionally use gelatin uh, or in a, in a more modern approach, you would take gelatin and you would it'd make a really solid stock. Then you cut it into cubes, yeah. freeze it, 
And then when it came out, you would put those cubes into a, a strainer and it would release all of its liquid. So it would oh. trap all the little impurities and the things that make it cloudy. So you could have like a, a modern consomme. If you're making a vegetable stock, you happen to be vegan, you have vegan customers, you yeah. can use agar in the exact same way is that you make a very sturdy, it's almost like a, a brick of gel. Yeah. Cut it into cubes, freeze it solid, throw it into a, a super bag, which yeah. we have at modernistpantry.com. And then you allow it Man, to- Man, really? <laughs> You've taught me well. So you allow it to melt and it will release the liquid because these two items, gelatin and agar, are not freeze-thaw stable. Yeah. Now, if you were gonna buy just any agar off the internet, there are many different types. And we have a very refined, very high quality agar. Yeah, that's, that's why we call it super agar. And yeah. some people say, why do you call it super agar? It's just a very high quality and yeah. it gels very strong. And, and this is probably the best quality agar you can get. So yeah. I would just be weary that, oh, if you see this and you want to get something that's cheaper, it's probably not as strong. It's probably not the gelling strength that right. you want. Yeah, it's so weird. When you look at gelatin, you can pretty easily usually find the bloom strength for that particular gelatin attached to it. Mm -hmm. uh, with agar, you don't actually have that for some reason um, wherever you get it. So if you buy it from a not as reputable source, you might find yourself needing to add more. Ours is so powerful that you might find you have to adapt your recipe the other way. Yep. Uh, oftentimes, you may have to add 10% less or so yep. than the recipe calls for um, because it's such a strong, uh, strong, uh, I don't want to say variant of it, but it's such a strong agar. Yeah, it's just refined. It's very high quality. Yeah. Uh, but other things that you can do, so you, we talked about fluid gel. If you want to take agar and make the, the gelatin dessert um, or the jello dessert, yeah. you could do that. I would absolutely suggest using vegan gelatin, though, yeah. just because the, the texture is a little bit better. You could take this, make the stock, like I said. But there's another thing, and some people do this, and it's called cold water spherification. This is so cool. So it, it's, it's very cool. It's... Not the same as spherification in the sense that the centers are liquid, and yeah. that's what you want with a, a traditional spherification. So I kind of like to call it cold oil pearls, yeah. just because when you take it, you heat it up, flavorful liquid, you're gonna wanna draw it into a syringe and then take oil, usually an oil like a canola or a neutral flavored oil that's refined that you can put into the freezer, and uh, it'll get very cold, and when you drop those droplets in, this gels at such a high temperature, so it gels at around 140, 150 degrees Fahrenheit. When it hits that cold oil, it makes a, a solid little jelly bead, yeah. then you can take it out of that oil. So let's just say you made um, a shallot or something extremely flavorful, yeah. like a shallot pearl, and you put it in some olive oil. Could you, you could then take that and then put it on so you get the flavor of the olive yeah. oil, and you also get the flavor of that shallot in a nice little bead that, you know, will look beautiful on a plate. Right, so for some comparative context, when you said it gels at, it means once it gets below that gelling temperature of 150, it'll start it, to Yeah, it gets really solid, quick. yes. For, for, for context, something like a, a, a gelatin Gels would at have very to, cold temperatures. So that would have to get below like an 80 degrees or something like below 90. Yes, yeah, so, so what I like to say is when, when, uh, when it's very cold outside and you, and you get a little stiff, it's probably because yeah. your, your joints are getting, uh, you know, it, it's so cold that they're starting to gel because we have gelatin yeah. in all of our joints. Sure. But this gels at such a high temperature that when it hits that oil, it turns right into a nice solid sphere. And this is not to, not to, not to, take over this one with another use, but that's kind of also why we have our vegan gelatin. Mm -hmm. Is I, I I'm a, I'm happen to be plant-based and I gave up on jellies because agar is amazing and it gets the texture right and it's 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 pretty easy to work with for, for gummies and stuff, but it's got such a high melting temperature that it, it doesn't release a whole lot of the flavor. Yes, and that's a good thing with fluid gel. Uh, because it melts at such a high temperature that when you chew it up, you get a muted flavor. So yeah. when you make something with it, you have to make sure those flavors are, are before you make the gel, the flavors need to be very on, on the end of almost, uh, not inedible, but very strong, you know, higher in acid, higher in salt content, higher yeah. in sugar content, because it, when you eat it, it's going to be slightly muted. Yeah. When you make a fluid gel out of it, you're shredding it up and you're giving, oh. you're giving a little bit more um, ability for that flavor to come back out. So yeah. that's, that's called flavor release. And, yeah. and that happens with a lot of these uh, gels that go to such a high temperature with the melting point. Yeah, and if you are just going for that firm gel and you happen to be preparing for, for plant-based guests or yourself, um, the vegan gelatin has a lower melting point than the, um, than the agar, which is yes. one of the things that makes it so good. There's actually, I won't go into detail, there's a whole episode on, on WTF. It's one of our earlier episodes where we cover the Druids Grow Vegan Gelatin. So if you're watching this on YouTube, um, make that your next stop. Well, actually, uh, I'll throw it in as the related video at the end here. So just remember that that'll be there and we'll connect them up. Sounds good. Cool.
I think right. that's about it with uh, fluid gel and agar. But obviously, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below, or you can uh, go to blog.monitorspantry.com, and we have an ask, uh, ability to ask a chef, which is a, a column that we do. So yeah. if you ask a question, uh, I will answer it directly to you first. And if it's really intriguing, then I'll write a little column about it so we can share it with uh, everyone. Yeah, your questions started out pretty easy, and now you guys are just getting weird with <laughs> octopus preparation, and it's it's been a blast. So keep them coming, whether it's just a normal question that we get all the time, uh, you'll get the response if it's a really particularly strange one. Honestly, those have been kind of making our day. Um, now, we also talked about a lot of recipes and other things, so... You can find those at blog.modernistpantry.com as well. Blog.modernistpantry.com, you're going to find um, your Bloody Mary gel. Yep. Um, and then we also have, we didn't talk about it here, but you've also got a smoke flavor gel. Yeah, so we, we made a smoked flavored gel uh, that's in one of our spherification booklets we, we just yeah. produced. And uh, so I was able to take a... a a very neutral gel made of water, a little bit of sugar, a little yeah. bit of acid, a little bit of salt. And I was able to take the smoking gun, which PolyScience makes, and I pumped it into the gel while it was blending. Oh my so God. I, I was able to get that smoke flavor, but in a nice clear, you know, sometimes liquid smoke is very brown and it, you can see it Not on the plate. Pretty. I wanted a nice clear gel so that you wouldn't necessarily see the smoke, but you would get the flavor you of it. literally captured smoke into a gel. Yes. It's the coolest thing. Now look, at the time we published this, that recipe, that one may not be available outside the kit yet. To be honest, we're putting that inside the kit as a... Something to look forward to. Yeah, so, um, but if you want to know when it's released, you'll probably see it in your email inbox, but only if you subscribe. At blog.monitorspantry.com, at the bottom of any page, you'll see a form. It asks you one question. What's your email? Uh, sign up for that, and you'll restart receiving uh, emails about once every other week or so, uh, each email containing the latest in recipes, episodes on WTF, uh, and some of the most interesting Ask a Chefs that we've gotten uh, in that past two-week period. We promise not to overload your inbox, then more inspiration than you can handle, and if you want even more inspiration than that, that's why we got all the social media channels. You can follow us there as well. Uh, anything else we want to say about fluid gels? No, we pretty much covered it. We, Agar, much we covered it. it. So look, if you're looking for this, you can get it at modernistpantry.com. Uh, one of the best things about getting it at modernistpantry.com is you know it's going to be super agar so you're not going to be messing around with it you're not going to be working with a lower quality ingredient that you got at some random online place even if whatever um so definitely make sure you get it from there head on over to the blog get some recipes going for it although it's easy enough to mix into your own flavorful liquids mm -hmm. have fun with it experiment and whatever you do whether it's just you learning how to do the swoops and swishes or you've done some crazy crazy plating with it come on over and share it with us post it to our facebook page share it with us on tag us on instagram we love seeing what you guys create because as people who love food there's nothing more exciting really than pictures of food apart from maybe being served it um but even when you get served it the first thing you do eat it take a picture oh. it's 28 we're two different people that's true <laughs> all right thank you so much for joining us here at wtf where we transform food if you love this content uh be sure to hit that subscribe button if you yourself are a culinary professional or you love food you made it this far into this video, you must be one of those. Uh, be also sure to share this along. Through these skills and through these ingredients and through these introductions, we're trying to help you make food more exciting. Uh, we've done some episodes where we help you save some costs. We've done some episodes where we help you achieve the impossible. That's actually a pretty common theme for us. Um, so we're trying to do this to help kitchens be a little bit more exciting, a little bit more uh, and run a little bit better. So uh, definitely share this along, help with the mission. That'd be amazing. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here. I'm Mark Verchette. And I'm Scott Guerin. Have a fantastic day.